Hey everybody, Mike Miller with the Herald Times, joined by columnist Jeremy Price, coming to you from the new and improved Welsh Shrine Arena after a 73-66 Indiana loss to Northwestern. IU's now lost five in a row. It's the longest losing streak for IU since the uh, basically the end of the Tom Crean era, uh, February of 2017. Indiana lost five in a row uh, in the final days of Tom Crean. Um, right now, you know, the future is not as bleak as it was back then in, in that winter of 2017, but. Uh, it's uh, IU searching right now. It's searching yeah. for a lot. Uh, once again, answers, solutions seem to be in short supply for this team. Um, you did see uh, a little bit more energy. You saw a little bit more life uh, from this program in the final eight minutes of this game. Uh, got it within one possession on um, one heck of a shot by Romeo Langford that really, I don't think anyone really thought was going to go in. I don't think even the players. It was really the first time in the last two weeks that you saw some smiles from these guys on the floor. Uh, after watching that shot go in, it got Indiana within a possession. They had further opportunities to get to keep it within one possession, or you know, keep that margin close. But uh, ultimately, they get on the other side of the court, couldn't couldn't knock shots down. Uh, you know, had a, a long two from Romeo Langford, didn't fall. Uh, Rob Finnessy, I think, drove into traffic, couldn't convert. Uh, I think there was also a Romeo Langford offensive foul on that end. Just mm -hmm. couldn't just couldn't break through that glass ceiling, as it were, in, in those final eight minutes. Had opportunities. Um, it's a kind of situation where. Uh, you know, maybe outside of the first eight minutes, uh, it was once again another game where you're just sort of wondering what's going on with this team. It was another sort of listless middle of the game for Indiana as Aaron Falzon, of all people, went off for Northwestern. Uh, now you're just kind of wondering if there's any way to maybe reconcile what you saw in those last eight minutes, some of the energy, some of the umph, <laughs> uh, and maybe find a way to sustain and maybe find some more fluidity with this offense. You're looking for a lot of things right now, but uh, maybe there were answers in those final eight minutes? Yeah, no. Uh, and the truth is, there aren't a lot of answers right now because, I mean, tonight you basically saw three different games. You had the beginning of the game where Indiana's up 20-13, to 13, and Al Durham was going to the free throw line, but he bricked a pair, but Indiana could have been up nine early in the first half. Then you had the last part of the first half and the first part of the second half, by which point Northwestern wound up up 15 points. So basically a 22-point shift in the game over that end of the first half, beginning of the second half. And then you had the, that last 10 minutes where Indiana all of a sudden roars back to life from down 15 to get within three uh, and, you know, stayed within generally four to six points down the stretch, just couldn't make the plays. But the effort level was something different down that stretch. And that's the frustrating thing with this team now is there's not any kind of consistency, not just in terms of play and what they do. I mean, we can talk about their weaknesses and not being able to shoot and, and making bad turnovers and getting stagnant and a lack of movement on offense and people just standing around watching Juwan Morgan hoping for something to happen. All those things are true, but to me the bottom line is the effort and the intensity and the passion that this team plays with. And I thought we saw in that last 10 minutes what this team's capable of. And, and maybe <clears throat> perhaps in that last 10 minutes, one of the better glimpses of what this team's capable of since the Marquette game, truth be told. And I guess you could go back to Louisville and Butler when they came back from second half deficits uh, to win late similar type situations, but that's what's really been missing lately. And what this team's got to figure out a way to do is to do that more often than not, rather than those little eight minute interlude being the exception, that's got to become the rule. And when it's not, that's the exception. I mean, that's really the bottom line for this team right now, I think. And yet you also wonder if that's even realistic at this point, especially as you continue to get into the season where guys, I mean, you had five guys play 33 minutes at least tonight. Joao Morgan played 37. At some point, I just feel like if they haven't already, you're going to see larger stretches where guys are just breaking down, gassed. I mean, you're, you still haven't seen – you saw Romeo Langford come off the game where he has four points, obviously his worst game. Uh, a bit better tonight, though. You do wonder as the season wears on if that's really even sustainable, getting that, that energy you know, stretched out over longer periods. Well, obviously that is an issue, and especially with the suspension of Devontae Green uh, announced before the game tonight, indefinite suspension. We'll see how many games that winds up entailing. Uh, but I think there's room to throw some of these other guys in. I thought, you know, Clifton Moore only played a couple of minutes tonight. But I, I thought he was passable in those couple of minutes. Uh, Jake Forrester came in in the second half when Juwan Morgan got in foul trouble. Play only Again, only played a couple of minutes. But again, you know, I think he had an offensive foul. But other than that, uh, you know, was by and large where he needed to be defensively. He was active on the glass. Uh, you know, I think you've... You've just got to kind of take your chances and work these guys in some as, as much as you don't want to and as much as you maybe don't fully trust them that they're going to make mistakes. But 
the mistakes they're going to make if they go in there and they play with that kind of effort and intensity that we're talking about and they give you that for two, three, four minutes in a stretch, I think you're better off doing that than playing these other guys, the extra minutes that you're talking about and the mistakes that they're making as well. It's not like the guys that are playing 33 minutes are playing flawless, perfect basketball over the course of those 33 minutes and we wouldn't want to replace them because they're playing so well. I mean, they have their moments, but all of them are certainly replaceable at this mm. point. So as we, and especially as this losing skid continues, I think it's just a further case where maybe at some point Archie Miller has to sort of reconcile the winning now and the rebuild of this program, which is obviously in progress, because I think if it wasn't clear before, it's very clear now that this is not an arrival type of season by any stretch of the imagination, just because Romeo Langford appeared and, and Juwan Morgan's obviously a very good player. But there's still a lot of work in progress in terms of what this team should ideally become in the eyes of Archie Miller in, in terms of how it plays, the way it plays defense, the way it plays offense, all those things. I think it's, it's very clear that this is anything but a finished product. And I don't think it's going to be a finished product this year. It's not going to be a finished product next year. We're talking a couple of years down the line, I think, at least, before we really get to where a team looks like an Archie Miller team. So in that sense, to embrace the rebuild, I don't think would be the worst thing in the world for Archie to do, and I don't think it'd be the worst thing in the world for the players to do. Um, Race Thompson dressed out tonight, didn't play, but it sounds like he's getting closer and closer to, to reappearing, and I, would, I think maybe Archie has a little more confidence in him. I felt like coming into the season, he was primed to play a bigger role, so I think he's going to work into the mix down the stretch of this season. So, you know, I think there's a lot that can be accomplished, not at the, necessarily at the sacrifice of trying to win this year, but you've got to, to do both, try to win this year and try to build for the future at this point. Definitely a difficult balance. Um, and yet you still look at this team and what it is right now. As you said, it, it has some pretty obvious flaws, uh, shooting chiefly among them. If you look at some of the recent numbers, I, I think, what, they were two of four, four for 21 tonight. Uh, but it, during the course of their five-game streak, they're, what, uh, 25% from three-point line. Mm -hmm. uh, in the last three, they were shooting only 18%. So um, it's also a stretch where, as we sort of lament the energy and the effort in certain segments, it's you also look at some of the shots. I mean, they're getting open looks from, from certain guys, and maybe a shot here, a shot there. You certainly go back to that uh, Purdue game, and maybe that's a little bit different if they hit some shots uh, you know, midway through that game, uh, and certainly here tonight. Uh, but that, that is clearly right now a huge weakness where, you know, again, if you, maybe you see a shot here, a shot there fall in, some of these games might, uh, might tip a little bit different. Yeah, I think that's absolutely true. And, you know, when you look at the last three games, the only making 10 three-pointers, I think I saw a stat tonight that the last time Indiana went through a stretch like that where they didn't make more than four three-pointers in a game was back in February, January or February of 2014, uh, the 2013-14 season, which uh, kind of went off the rails, right not, around the not dissimilarly to, <laughs> yeah. to the way this did. I think yeah. it waited a little bit longer to do so, but a uh, very similar type situation. Yeah, I think, you know, there's certainly some shots that could go in, and, and for some guys, seeing the, sh the ball go in would be helpful. But again, that's where I go back to playing with that intensity and effort level, because if you bring that and you bring that on the defensive end, I think it's going to create more opportunities on the offensive end and more quality opportunities on the offensive end. Plus, it's going to take some of that pressure off your offense. If you're given that kind of effort defensively and on the glass, I think it can relieve some of that offensive pressure as well. And hopefully you get some offense in transition in the process. So, you know, it's kind of one of these things that there's not a there's not necessarily a defined, you do this, then this happens necessarily, but you've kind of just got to put the effort forth to make things fall in place. And I felt like we only saw that really in, in the last eight minutes tonight. And, and not that the effort was poor at the start of the game, but I thought Indiana was just steady and Northwestern was very flat at the mm -hmm. start of the game. Uh, and then Northwestern picked up, the, uh, picked up its level and Indiana really didn't respond until it got down 15. So mm -hmm. that's could, where we're at. Yeah, that's where we're at. This could... Uh... Quite easily reached six games here, uh, getting back to Wilmington Friday, 6.30, I believe 6.30 tip-off. Yeah. Uh, with number five, Michigan, coming into town. No bargain. Yeah. You know, this is, uh, this is, uh, this could get worse before it gets better. Um, but, uh, you know, I think... What you have to hope is that you get some carryover from this last mm -hmm. eight, ten minutes tonight, and that there's a, a feeling, especially when they go back and watch, you would hope that they would see the difference between the previous ten minutes when Northwestern was handing them the rear end and those last 10 minutes when they made that comeback. And if you start from that point against Michigan, then you've got a chance. Mm -hmm. If not, 6-0. 6-0. Well, I guess we can leave it there. We'll see uh, Friday night back at Assembly Hall.